the story of Crazy Joe was torn from yesterday's headlines, and it's as terrifying as tomorrow's. Good morning. Welcome back to Crazy Joe's Concession Stand. I'm your host, Crazy Joe. Today we have another physical media review. Today we are talking about The Flash. The Flash is now available on Blu-ray, the 1990 TV series that originally aired on CBS on Thursday nights in 1990, has now come to glorious Blu-ray, thanks to our friends at Warner Archive. This is a Warner Archive title, and that, of course, means it's made on demand. Um, You may recall, excuse me. Some time ago, I did a video called DVD is Dead, where we were discussing the issue of disc rot. And one of the problems we were talking about was The Flash. Several discs from the original DVD release of The Flash, uh, are they're no good anymore. You you can't watch several episodes from this original um, DVD run anymore because they unfortunately have um, disc rot. I think disc two, disc six, I think those were some of the affected discs so with this dvd box set is listed the complete series if you miss you may not have the complete series anymore because disc rot may have uh overtaken it it definitely has on mine but that's okay because our friends at warner brothers have come to our rescue with a new blu-ray set you can pick this up now it's available in stores now it's through warner archives now what does that mean warner archives it means it's made on demand this isn't something you're just going to be able to walk into your local store and pick up you need to go to like amazon and i think warner archives has their own website you can definitely get warner archive titles through amazon that's that's for certain and they they're manufactured on demand and uh, that way you know it, it makes a uh, titles that maybe wouldn't fly off the shelf. It makes them more commercially viable to do them on demand because they don't need to have crazy overstock. They just, you know, as people want them, they print them up. So let's see what you get here. Get all the episodes. Now the flash only ran for one season. Disc one, disc two, disc three, disc four. Six discs you get, six discs. And what I really like about this is, if you look at these discs, it actually lists the episode titles on the disc. And that's really nice. I mean, I, we've all had those situations, right, where you get a disc and you have to find the little booklet that comes with the disc to figure out which episodes are on which disc. Not so with this. They're making it real nice and easy, putting the episode titles right on the discs now i'll tell you i didn't watch all the episodes uh when this came in i said okay let's let's pop this in watch a couple episodes i watched the trickster episode with mark hamill i watched the captain cold episode with one of my favorite actors jeffrey combs although he doesn't play captain cold he plays another um like a like a gangster uh Yeah, I watched a couple episodes, and let me tell you, this show has never looked better. It didn't look this good back when it aired on CBS, because it was in SD back then. First time I've ever seen this show in HD, and it really looks good. The look of the show, if you've never seen it, it was very much inspired by the 89 Batman movie. The look of the costumes, the kind of rubbery look, very much a takeoff on Batman. Even Danny Elfman, who wrote the score for Batman, even does the theme song, and it's wonderful. Now, The Flash was obviously revived on the CW, and it lasted much, much longer. But this series ties into the CW show. So if you've never watched this, but you've seen the CW version, this version of The Flash, played by John Wesley Shipp, and some of the other characters like Julio, uh, they actually turn up on the CW show. Tina McGee is a character from this show. She returns played once again by Amanda Pays, the character who played her here. Mark Hamill returns as the trickster on the CW series. So a lot of characters that are introduced on this series do make the transition to the revival on the CW. And that's really cool. So if you've if you've seen the CW show but not this, this is a good um, prelude. Uh, you can view this as a uh, prequel maybe uh, although it does take place in an alternate universe but you know dc is a multiverse and characters cross through the multiverse as we've seen happen on the flash i'm really glad to have this thank you to warner archives for making this available this was sent to me for for review 
And I want to say thank you to Warner Archives. And I want to say thank you to uh, my good friend J2H of the J2H channel who uh, helped make this possible. Be sure to check out J2H. And uh, I'm going to give this the biggest recommendation I can give. If you are a fan of DC Comics, you're going to want to check out The Flash. It was a great show in 1990. It's a great show today. And these discs are wonderful. I'll put a link down below on where you can pick up a copy of The Flash through Amazon. And uh, I, I recommend doing it. This, this is a good show. I, I'll tell you another thing. Here's another little bit of in interesting trivia. Mark Hamill, when he plays the trickster in this, he has a sidekick named Prank, a girl named Prank, played by the great Corinne Borer. Corinne Borer was one of those actresses who, who appeared on TV a lot during the 1990s. Some of you may remember her as Bobcat Goldthwait's love interest from uh, Police Academy 4, Citizens on Patrol. She was Booger's love interest in Revenge of the Nerds 4. She always appeared in part four of 80s franchises for some reason. She also starred as a witch named Winnie on an old uh, defunct sitcom called um, Free Spirit. Uh, she was on a sitcom called Double. She was one of those actresses. She was all over your TV and all over the movies in the 80s. And she plays the tri trickster psychic Prank. And I and many others do believe that Prank was the inspiration for Harley Quinn, who would be created just a couple years later on Batman, the animated series. But I think if you want to see the prototype for Harley Quinn, it's Corinne Borer on this series playing prank. Another role she would reprise on the CW series. All right. Thanks to Warner Brothers. Thanks to J2H. I love this show. Check it out. Keep wearing those pajamas, everybody. Keep wearing those pajamas with the plastic feet. Keep wearing those pajamas. Tell everyone what you need. Keep wearing those pajamas with the back door flap. Keep wearing those pajamas. Don't open it to trap. Oh no, it's a trap. Some people call them bitches. Some people call them jammies. So they can come embroidered with big money and no whammies. They can have a hundred tiny commander and damas. But no matter how they look, just keep on wearing those pajamas. Keep on wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas. And now we're having fun. Keep wearing those pajamas. And now the song is done. <laughs>